Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm inside this 2005 Mercedes C200 W203 model and today I'm going to show you how to upgrade from this Audio 20 system into an Android based head unit with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration. I normally break these content up into small chunks of video but this time I combine the unboxing, removal, installation and DIY ability score all in this one video. This car entertainment system is starting to show its age. It only has a basic radio and CD functionality. This one has the, the optional Bluetooth um, integration there. You can't even use that to play music so it's really um, showing its age. This is a 2005 but it's only done 125,000 kilometers and it still runs well. It's in excellent condition both inside and out. So I'm gonna replace this head unit um, keep these panels um, over here in intact and just retain this with the um, uh, aluminium bezel over there. I've seen other um, Android head unit where you know to to get uh, a bigger screen they sacrifice uh, this panel here remove this whole panel so that this screen goes all the way to the bottom and you get a bigger screen but I don't want that I want what I chose is sleek with st still with buttons um, not as many but you've got um, four buttons on each side and um, like a volume knob on, on either side at the bottom. So it looks classy and I'm really excited to give this uh, Mercedes a quick makeover um, internally. So let's get started. First, let's see what comes in the box. These are two USB cables so we can connect our phones and other peripherals. Um, you can also see a video input here. Next I can see here the GPS antenna, uh, the radio antenna adapter from ISA to FACRA. You can see the canvas decoder. Um, you can also see a SIM card slot and a Wi-Fi antenna. Next we have the internal TPMS sensor. These sensors are separate from the head unit, it's just that I bought it from the same supplier so they package it up together. I did have to pay extra shipping for this so it's kind of weird um, where the head unit has free shipping and they charged me for um, uh, about $20 to ship this um, even though they're gonna package it up in the same box so that's kind of weird. This is the first time I'm seeing an internal TPMS sensor up close. I'm not sure whether quality wise they're good, but um, felt um, heavy, substantial, um, screws in okay. Um, so I'm pretty happy so far. Um, this one has a, a, a USB dongle um, for its TPMS receiver. Um, which means that I need to uh, use up the second USB um, connector that's available on the head unit. So I've only got uh, one free USB cable for my phone. And it also comes with these plastic pry tools to help on the installation. So that's handy. And finally they provide you with this wiring harness so you can connect the head unit to the car's quad lock connector. So this is built specifically for W203. The wiring harness also seemed to have a provision to connect pins on the top of the section there. And since my C200 has the corresponding output pin, I will certainly explore this later on. And finally we have the head unit itself. I like the classic look of this design. Um, buttons on either side, screen's not too big, knurled um, volume and power buttons.
I also like how the design of this head unit uh, being flat rather than ex having, having the body extending in the dashboard cavity. Um, it just helps with cable management. The buttons also have a good tactile feel to it. You can definitely hear it when you press it. And the volume knobs, you have uh, knurled edges um, so you can easily grasp it. They're also tactile when you press it. So far, yeah, it's good quality. So just a quick rundown of the, the work that's involved. I've seen other videos, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm by no means an expert. I'm a DIYer. I rely on information that's available, readily available on the internet, um, YouTube and, and forums and everything else. Um, I don't have access to Mercedes service manual, how to, to go about this. So I'm, I'm learning as I go. This is the first time I'm going to dismantle this kind of head unit. So what I've learned from all my research is that you basically approach this in like this order. You remove this, this, and then remove this panel up going up to the, this to expose basically the screws that are here and here so you can take it out. All these are screwed in, I think. Um, that's why you need to get rid of this top section to have access to these two screws so you can take it out. Um, remove these panels to have access and, and this one so you have access to two screws here so you can take it out and then from there you have four screws waiting for you to be uh, removed and then take this this um, stereo out. First thing I'd like to do is tackle the air vent. So there are two clips on each vent. They're on the left hand side of the vent. If you can see that here, that's the clip right there. And on the other side, it's that and that. So what you do is you, um, for the bottom clip, you uh, push it um, this way. So you can see, um, I'm, I'm using a, a flathead screwdriver, a small flathead screwdriver, but if you have a, a plastic uh, pry tool um, that you can use, use that so you don't scratch the plastic trims. So what I do is I push it inward. And this bottom clip here, what it does is it allows you to move, move the vent up. So the bottom clip goes up the top clip goes down. So we'll start with the bottom clip. So we push it in, I'll uh, push it out, or push it this way, and then you push it up there. So you can see a bit more clearance here. So you just do the same. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other one. So they're both ready, and that's it. Okay, so once you have the vent uh, tilted up, you need a long T20 Torx screwdriver. As you can see here, the slot here is very narrow. And in order to reach that screw, you, you need to push it up a bit. Or if you have a longer um, screw T20 Torx screw, then um, we should be good. But in, in, in my case, this is like a tad short. So I need if I need to just um, Open that up a bit so to clear this um, metal part here across, and I should be able to just um, reach that there. And oh, great, it stays there, <laughs> so at least I don't have to worry about um, dropping that. So now I'm gonna. Uh, loosen up the other side. Um, same same drill. Um, just need to push that in a bit. Just be careful you don't break the plastic panel. Um, it's gonna be a bit um, tight here. Just make sure that it's there. We go.
Okay, first job done. The next step is to um, open up the top part of the vent. So you do that by reaching into that top clip, push it this this way, and pull it down. And you do the same thing on the other side. The next step is to uh, reach into that clip. I'm not sure whether that's very that's clear, but um, uh, make sure this uh, vent is down. And if you can see this ridged um, part, that's the one that's holding the clip. So you need to insert a, um, a screwdriver in there and basically um, pull that that thing down um, I need I kind of need to do this with two hands but um, that's the part that you need to unclip okay um, I'm having several goes at this but what I find uh, that works worked for me is I use this plastic pry tool and it kind of uh, insert this um, up the top and open up open up that um, that clamp and sort of uh, use your other hand and so you really need to feel your way through this using the other hand try to pull it out and now you've um, released that side um, and then do the other on uh, repeat the process on the other side. So let's just do that. Um, hopefully, I would have a better handle at this um, and not. So, use that left hand. There it is. And then from here, we should be able to just gently pull it out, like so. So what I was doing right there was I was reaching in with this plastic pry tool and trying to push this this thing down, so it, so it released that that bite. And then as I as I do that, I I grab this and gently tug it out. I chose not to disconnect the wire here so I'll just set the aircon vent on top of the dashboard for now. So that's the first part of the process. What it did allow us to do is expose these two T20 torque screws so that we can remove this control panel here. <laughs> After removing the aircon vent, um, next step is to uh, remove this um, control panel here. And these are held by two clips on either side, which is really tight. In trying to figure out a way how to remove this panel without damaging any of the clips, rather than pulling this by hand with um, some force I found out that you can if you have one of these kinds of pry tools um, this this will make things a lot easier and a lot safer as well so I'll just demonstrate to you how easy it is to remove this panel without um, without damaging anything or without breaking anything so first is you use this plastic pry tool so you just gently pry the sides open just give create a gap so that's that's enough gap once you have that gap using this kind of pry tool just insert it towards the bottom there push it in and then twist it and what it does is it grabs onto that um, back piece so and then just pull it and there you have it 
So doing that again on the other side, just insert that. And then insert this small grab tool. Then, and then at this point you can get rid of this. And then just gently pull it out. And just to show you what what this does. What I was, what I was doing there was inserting this onto that edge there. And what it does is once it's inserted, you twist it and then it rubs onto that and you pull it. Um, it's ex exactly the same as the on, on the other side. So insert it, twist it, and then pull. Next, we'll need to remove these panels here and work our way up. But before we begin, we need to put the car into either reverse or neutral. Just make sure you have your parking brake on so the car won't roll back. Then using a plastic pry tool similar to this, gently pry out the plastic trim around the gear lever. There's a total of four clips holding this plastic trim in place. Depending on how old your car is, these clips can get really brittle and if you look closely at the bottom there I've broke one of the clips off already. Disconnecting this wire is optional by the way. I found out that you can actually wiggle the wooden trim around the gear stick um, without having to disconnect these wires. And the next step now is to just grab onto each of the corner here and release the clips that hold this trim in place. So I'm just showing you where the clips are located so you know where to apply pressure when you're pulling this trim out. Next step is to remove this um, cigarette lighter compartment. Um, and to do that, there are two clips on either side. All you need to do is um, just sort of pull it towards this way. So I'm using this plastic pry tool. I'll reach into the other side. Do the same thing. It should. Um, and then just gently pull that out. Um, careful, there should be some wiring connector here, which you need to unplug. So next is to remove this uh, connector here, this cable. So to do that, it actually connects in. It's like a right angle connects in to this um, port here. So we just need to pull it this way. There it is. That's what that connector looks like. Next, we need to remove the screw that holds the aircon control panel in place. There's one on either side. Be careful when loosening this screw that it doesn't fall inside the cavity underneath. So I managed to take that screw out without dropping it into the cavity. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the screw on the other side offline. Then I'll show you how to unclip this aircon control panel. This aircon controls held in held in place by clips here on either side. Pry. Start on this side. I've, I've done this side already, and I think I broke a few. Um, but basically, just do that, and it's gonna be really brutal. Um, and do that same thing over on that side. Just make sure to push that in and then clip goes out. All I need to do next is to remove these cables. So this is quite standard. Just press it in the middle and then slide this gray thing there. It comes off. I think it just uh, comes right off, hopefully. Yep, just comes right off. And you know, like like before, just 
take this opportunity to give that a good wipe. So the next step is to remove these four screws here. After that, that's the disassembly. So, the big reveal. Just pull it out. It's quite heavy. There's a clamp at the, um, at the end, so you just need to... Okay. A few um, backer connectors. Uh, these are delicate, so just be careful. There's a clamp um, at the top. Just gently squeeze it and then through that. And that's the stereo removed. Okay, so I've managed to uh, remove all the different components on the center stack. The radio's gone, um, so the cavity's pretty much opened up. And for the past hour, I've been trying to figure out how to route the USB cable onto somewhere that's accessible to the driver. Um, I managed to find a small hole there. So what I'm planning to do is I've got two uh, cables and one two USB cables and one uh, 4G cable. So what I'm going to do uh, is try to fit everything in there and then route it all along, along this up here uh, down here. So that's one. Um, so the idea is just kind of route that all the way through here. I think, I think that should be um, up down again down here. USB cable somewhere the driver can access. So I'll I'll do that for all the three cables. So essentially um, from here, there's a small hole there. Go all the way through here. Pull it, up, give it enough slack so that when we're here on this side, you can actually pull the head unit out further in front, and then you can disconnect it. So I'll, um, I'll cut from here. Um, I'm not going to do a full install. I'm just going to get the basics of the head unit, which means there's two USB cables, the 4G. Um, not even going to connect the GPS at the moment and the microphone. Um, just the radio, the USB, the 4G, and I'm going to close up. So I managed to... Uh, route it up to the um, to the center stack here. I think it's as much slack as I can give it. Should be enough. And in terms of the 4G, it's really not enough room um, up there. So there's only room for two cables. So I'm just gonna connect it up. Um, just a simple just, uh, connect the cables to each of the corresponding port, and I should be able to turn it on. So just quickly showing you, this is what the back of the head unit looks like. Connected the radio, steering wheel control, 
quad lock connector. Like I've said, I'm not going to worry some of the accessory connectors here. I'm going to do that in a later video. But I want to just close this up and, and check everything's working. And then I'm going to open it up again and then connect the microphone, the GPS, and the uh, 4G antenna and the reverse camera. I don't have the reverse camera yet, so I'm going to have to open it up again and install all the all the rest of the components. So I've uh, connected up the two USB cables. Just enough slack for me to connect it. Um, I've also connected this. I'm not sure which is the, the right cable for the radio because uh, there are two of them here. Uh, so I'm just going to do a trial and error, whichever gives me a, uh, a better signal on the radio, that's what I'm going to connect. So for now I've connected the, uh, the yellow one. I'm now going to hook up the quad lock, the wiring harness in here. There it is. Hooked it up. And I'm just going to do a quick connectivity test, make sure everything is working. Um, there we go. And ignition. Um, turn that on. Don't worry about the smudge there. Uh, I still have the screen protector <laughs> just in case I need, I need to return it. It uh, looks like it's starting up. It's pretty good. Radio, let's see if that's going to pick up anything. Let's see if the... Okay. Steering wheel control seems to work. But it doesn't seem to pick up any radio signals. So I'm gonna uh, stop that. I'm going to turn it off just in case. Um, and then I'm going to use the other connector. Um, so gently lay that there. And see if this black one would give us a better signal. Awesome. So that's it. I'm going to close up. Got USB ports connected, uh, radio is working, and I'm gonna close up and come back with the second part of this video where I'll install the reverse camera and all the other stuff. The clamp that holds the hazard and the controls and the air con uh, control is actually attached to the radio. So I'm going to have to pry that out and install it on the new head unit. So this is what the clip looks like. It's really easy. Um, just use a long nose pliers and just pull it. It just pulls straight out. I've done one uh, and I'm just going to show you how I did it. Uh, grab that by the that end there and then just give it a good tuck. And that's it. Just drop that in there. And do the same for all the all the rest. There, there should be four of them um, around each of the um, corners. So just um, there it is. Uh, it's like pulling the teeth out. And the last one. So now that it's uh, you've unplugged the, um, the connector there, you just um, 
Let's push it in. Would have been easier if I'd connected this before I plugged in all the cables. There it is. Okay, cool. Just need to give needs to get get in there in at the right angle. And it should just uh, pop right in. I uh, did the same thing for the other ones. Yep, make sure it's center. Um, and lucky last. So this one is a groove. Um, in here, so there's sort of a, a groove there, which I think that just sit there just enough. So you just need to make sure it's centered. Mm -hmm. It's not center a bit, so we just need to just um, line it up a bit. There it is. Cool, so now we have all the mounting brackets. Hopefully that all lines up. Okay. Um, and to attach, and normally what I do is I make sure everything's tucked in there. I think this one would probably rattle the steering wheel control. I am going to on top there so it doesn't rattle too much but I'll fix that up um, later maybe not I'll just leave it that so what I normally do is I just um, from the bottom and then push it up and then now I've got all lined up so we'll see so okay so now we're back gonna All the T27 Torx screws, T20, I mean. So I'm slowly putting, putting everything back together. I've connected this control panel here. See here, it doesn't really fit. And what I do, what you can do is just sort of slide it up, um, up there um, on one side, so it's sort of made it flush, and now you should be able to just push that in. And now, okay, at least cool, that's still working. And then screw it on. Then connect the aircon control, black one first, because that's the longer. Make sure it's in the fully open position until you hear it click. Um, <clears throat> then just hide it in, and then push it in. Push it in until that gray lever goes up, and then just lock it in place. Same thing, just tuck in all the wires back. Make sure it's clear, it's not pinched. And then again, clips. Okay, set the clips. Okay. And then the two screws at the bottom. Um, I'll probably leave it for now because I am going to remove it again so i'm not going to connect that screw and then i'm just gonna connect the um the cigarette lighter before you can do that you need to so the last bit is the uh, this one here, so the two clips um, on either side, you just need to line it up. And 
probably open that for a better thing. But then you need to um, put that uh, up here first, and then gently stuff that in. There it is, nice and snug. Make sure it's back all connected. Um, then I'll just give it a nice good feeling there. And last but not the least, the air vent. Make sure the uh, cables slide up there. As I said earlier, it was sort of tucked in this way, but I don't think I'm gonna tuck it in. I'll just give it a bit of slack so next time I remove it, um, it won't be as difficult. Um, so, what I find is that you have to slide it in sideways, make sure the wires are tucked in. So I should have a wire um, with a tape. Um, just need to make sure it doesn't snag. And then just tuck it all in. Gently. Lift it up a bit. So sort of rolled it back, rolled it at the bottom there, and then just push top in. that and we're done I finished installing this Android head unit last night it was light it's getting dark so this is the morning after and I'm pretty happy with the result it's nice and sleek it's very minimalistic it's not in your face aftermarket head unit it still looks classy and well integrated into into the center stack if you look at it even closely you wouldn't even think this is an aftermarket stereo in my opinion it even has um, the classic mercedes-benz interface um, the blue icon it also comes built in with apple carplay so i'm just gonna plug it in i'm gonna take off the mat I'm going to plug in um, Apple CarPlay. Apple CarPlay starts up automatically when you plug in an iPhone, but it'll only work on the black USB connector. If you exit CarPlay and you want to start it up again, there's an app in this head unit called Phone Link, so you can launch, launch CarPlay manually. This built-in CarPlay integration is only available on higher spec models, so that's the 4GB ROM and 64GB RAM. It's more pricey, but I think it's well worth the spend. The way I implemented the 
USB connector is, is just underneath this flap here. Um, it's hidden inside there, but eventually I'll probably come up with a more elegant way. Um, I notice under inside underneath this panel there's a, a big gap, so maybe the there's an opportunity here to um, cut a hole and install a the USB and the auxiliary input connectors right here um, but yeah it's pretty happy with, with this um, with the result and now I'm gonna give this project a DIY ability score this is the part where I rate the work I've done by judging it across five categories each category gets a score from 1 to 10 and so the maximum score any of my DIY project can get is 50 Starting with affordability, price range of Android-based head units I've seen online for this car range from $180 to $1,000. This particular one cost me about $349, which puts it in the cheap end of the spectrum. So from an affordability point of view, this project gets a 9 out of 10. Moving on to the quality category, this head unit, although it looks really sleek, has limited canvas integration. It doesn't provide you a UI feedback on parking sensors like other head units I've worked with. Um, it has no vehicle control settings and it doesn't even allow you to modify the built-in home screen. You're also unable to change songs using the steering wheel buttons on CarPlay, but that has always been an issue with all Android head units I've worked with. So this project gets a 7 out of 10 for quality. As far as satisfaction is concerned, the effort to outcome ratio of this work is really good. All up, I estimate it took me about five to six hours of continuous work, and it might have been quicker if I had the right tools to remove the control panels directly above and below the stereo. I'm very happy that this car now has built-in GPS and phone integration for under $500, giving it at least five years of extra usable life. I even had TFPMS integration because the system is now running um, Android and I can easily install a reverse camera in the future. This project gets a 10 out of 10 for satisfaction. Moving to fit and finish, the new head unit blends well in the cabin. I like the simplistic design of the head unit and the user interface. I also like the fact that the actual body of the head unit is vertically flat inside the dashboard cavity which made cable management really easy. So I'm giving this project a 10 out of 10 in this category. And finally, fun factor. The removal and install process of this head unit was almost easy and straightforward if I had been using the correct tools from the get-go. The clips around the control panel and aircon vent can be a pain to unclip, and it almost made me give up. But with the right tools, it was actually easy. So I'm giving this project a 9 out of 10 in this category. And that gives this DIY project a raw score of 45 out of 50, which puts it in second place on my DIY ability scoreboard. That's everything I have for you in this video. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And finally, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification icon so you don't miss any of my future updates. Until next time.